Hello friends, my name is Alex and welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you are here. Thank you for stopping by. Today I am going to be doing a little book haul for you. So because this is my first book haul, I didn't know like how long of a time period to choose. So I just kind of did like the last couple of months books I've picked up. We've got about 20 to get through and I am going to section them off in the timeline for you of different genres. So if you're only interested in one genre, you can skip around down there to what you're interested in. We have one historical fiction. We have a little bit of mystery, a little bit of romance, and then some adult fantasy and a lot of YA fantasy because you know that's my top genre. I've been trying to branch out so I do have a couple different genres to talk to you about and I am really excited to get into them today. So I am going to be starting off with my one historical fiction book that I have. It is actually an ARC that I got from my local indie bookstore every once in a while. My local bookseller will throw in an ARC with your order and I just happened to get this one and this is Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman. So it seems like we are set in 1799. Our main character's name is Dora and she is an aspiring jewelry artist and her uncle comes across this historical Grecian vase that he becomes really obsessed with and it seems kind of strange. She teams up with an antique scholar to look into this vase and figure out what this kind of mystery is. There could potentially be some fantasy elements in this. I really am not totally sure. Maybe some Greek mythology we'll get into with it. I don't really know. I'm excited to find out. You are interested in it. This book releases on January 17th. So not that long from now, you can get your hands on it pretty soon. Next, I want to talk to you guys about a genre that I am really getting into lately, and that is mysteries. Specifically, more cozy mysteries has been what I have been leaning towards, but I do have kind of a variety. So starting off with a contemporary, this is a dark academia contemporary mystery called If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I have talked about this book a lot on my channel already as I have read it. I even did a little reading vlog on it. So this is a really fun dark academia story. We follow a group of theater students who are studying Shakespeare at a really prestigious academy and they're studying the tragedies while simultaneously living out some tragedies of their own. This was a really intriguing one. It's got an interesting perspective. We start off 10 years after the events of the story with the student who actually went to prison for the crimes that happened and him talking to the detective and the te detective asking him, what actually happened because he does not believe that the student who was arrested is really who was responsible for everything that happened. So then you kind of go back in time and everything unfolds in front of you. This had some really, really intriguing characters which were just written so well. It was definitely creepy vibes, but not too scary for me. I am a little bit of a wimp and I absolutely adored this book. It was such a good time. So if you are a fan of contemporary mysteries with that dark academia twist, definitely give If We Were Villains a try. Next up, we get into some of the cozy mysteries that I have been picking up lately. The first being Shady Hollow by Juno Black. This is a woodland creatures mystery, which I have recently read. I will be talking about it in my December wrap up. And I did enjoy this one. It, it was my first cozy mystery that I have ever read. So it was definitely a new genre for me. I did enjoy that all of the gore and like scariness happened off page. So you're really just getting to know the characters, getting to know kind of the facts and trying to uncover what happened. And this was a really adorable one. Next up is Dead in Gondola by Anne Clare. I am actually currently reading this book at the moment and super enjoying it. This is a very wintry one. So a good one to pick up for kind of December, January, February, if you want those wintry vibes. This is a bookshop cozy mystery about a kind of um, historical bookshop set up in the mountains of Colorado that is only accessible by gondola or a very dangerous windy road to drive up. So most people ride the gondola up and down to get to this bookstore and a man turns up dead on the gondola. So obviously the bookshop owners have to look into it, have to figure out 
what happened to this man. It is super fun and cute so far. I am really enjoying it. And obviously I will report back in my monthly wrap up once I have finished this book. A another wintry themed mystery that I have recently picked up is The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict. Now, I don't know if this one is technically a cozy. I'm not totally sure. I have not started it. This story is about a woman who has this family estate that her family goes to to celebrate Christmas every year. And she does not want to go back there because that is the place where her mother died. And she believes that her mother was murdered. So this year they're doing this kind of like clue game where they have to hunt for keys and the winner wins a prize. And her aunt tells her that if she wins, she will tell her who killed her mother, or it might help her uncover who killed her mother. Not totally clear on that either, but it sounds really intriguing. I think I will pick this up hopefully around Christmas time if I'm still in that mystery mood after I finished Dead in Gondola. But yeah, this one sounded really interesting and a great wintry one, I think. That concludes the mysteries that I wanna to talk to you about. And now we will move into the romance genre. Romance is a newer genre for me. I am not very well versed in it, but these are just a few that I have picked up and hopefully I will really like the ones that I haven't read yet. The ones that I have read, I have enjoyed so far. So I am excited to be getting more into the genre and discovering more and more what types of romance books I do like. So the first one that I have is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. And this is more of a like romance slash cozy fantasy, I think. It's not like fully a romance book. There are other elements. Obviously, we've got some magic, some witches, and I have heard it compared to The House in the Cerulean Sea, which is just a really sweet, adorable read. So I hope that this one really lives up to that because it sounds just amazing. The author is Sangu Mandana, and I have heard nothing but great things about this. This is a story about a witch who has to hide that she's a witch from the world, but in this world, she is actually kind of a YouTuber who makes videos about magic, doing magic, but everyone who watches her channel thinks it's all fake, like she thinks she's just pretending to be a witch. And one day she is contacted by people from this manor where they have three young girls who are witches and they need some guidance. So they want to hire this woman to come kind of be their tutor. So she ends up taking the job and going to live in this home where there happens to be a grumpy librarian, some romance and brew in there. And she starts to discover that maybe being on her own isn't the best thing after all. So this sounds just super adorable, super cozy. It just seems very comforting. So I am really looking forward to getting to this one. Next is a, another one I just picked up yesterday. This is Once Upon a December by Amy E. Reichert. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. This is another kind of magical fantasy, more magical realism in this one. I really enjoy a little bit of sprinkle of fantasy in my romance because fantasy is my main genre. That does kind of help me get more into the genre. So that is a lot of what I've been reading. If you have any romance with a sprinkle of fantasy recommendations, please drop them in the comments because I'm looking for more. I really want to love romance. And I also love a closed door romance, which I believe this one is. So fingers crossed that that is the case for me. But this one seems really cute. It is about a woman who goes to this Christmas market and meets a man there who has this strange magical kind of affliction where he really only exists within this Christmas market. So he only lives in Decembers. So every year he just, he lives for four weeks December and then next it's December the next year, I guess is kind of how his life works. And they have a romance and maybe he starts to realize that that's not the best existence. And maybe there's more to live for than just this Christmas market where he exists. So this seems cute and adorable. I picked it up from my local indie and hopefully it will be a fun Christmassy romance for me. Then we have a book that I recently read and talked about in my November wrap up. So if you wanna hear me gush about how much I loved this book, you can check out that video. I will link it in whichever corner it is so that you can watch that. But this is Small Town Big Magic by Hazel Beck. She's, wow, she's really shiny, picking up my ring light. But this is a, another witchy romance. Like I said, that is apparently my genre. Witchy romance, a small town vibes, and it is so freaking funny, so freaking adorable. I just had 
an absolute blast reading this. We follow a small town bookstore owner who has a kind of a magical experience and discovers that she's actually a witch and she's just forgotten it. And all of her friends are witches and there is some dark magic threatening her beloved hometown. And she has to team up with her friends to stop this evil magic from destroying her town. So there is so much more to this. I'm trying to give these quick synopses because I've got so much to talk to you about today, but this is such a darling book. I had the absolute best time reading it. The town gave me the biggest Stars Hollow vibes and I laughed so much. So definitely highly recommend this one as well. My last romance that I am going to talk to you about kind of bridges a lot of genres as well. It's got some fantasy elements, more magical realism, I would say. It has some mystery elements. It is a contemporary and this is just near and dear to my heart. I absolutely adored this one as well. It is Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. And I recently discovered that I think part of why I love this book so much is that it gives me the vibes of the song Ivy by Taylor Swift. If you love that song, like love the just like folktale, fantasy, but like romance and angst vibes of that song, this book has it. It's not like the story of the song, but it just, all those vibes that I have been wanting are in this book. It is such an interesting one. This is the story of a kind of magical island off the coast of Washington, where 14 years ago, a young woman was found dead on the night of their high school graduation. And our main character, this was her best friend who was found dead and her boyfriend was accused of murdering her. So now 14 years later, this ex-boyfriend is returning to the island for the very first time and lots of things are going to be uncovered and going to go down in this story. It is so wonderful. I had such a lovely time reading it, that blend of genres. Like I said, I'm just getting into mystery. I'm just getting into romance and I'm a huge fantasy reader. So the fact that this combines all of those just kind of made it a perfect cozy read for me. I really sped through it and had the best time reading it. So that wraps up all of the romance that I want to talk to you about. Next up, we are going to get into some adult fantasy. So to start us off with our adult fantasy, I will start with an adult fantasy romance, which I actually picked up from my local Little Free Library. I found in there A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. So I have read all of the books leading up to this one in the Akatar series, and this is the only one I hadn't read yet. So I do believe this has quite a bit of smut that I will be skipping over as I read it. It's just not my personal taste, but I am intrigued in the plot and hopefully I will enjoy this one when I get to it. But yeah, I picked it up. They had it at my little free library. So I figured if I'm ever gonna read it, might as well pick it up from there. If you don't know about the Akatar series, it is such a difficult one to explain because Sarah J Maas loves to start her series one way and then completely change them in the subsequent books. But the first book, A Court of Thorns and Roses, follows our main character, Feyre and her family who are very poor in the human realm and she has to go out and hunt for their food in the forest. One day she accidentally kills a fae instead of a wolf. And as a result of that, she is taken away into the fae realm to kind of atone. And she discovers that there might be a curse on the spring court where she ends up. And it is lots of things unfold from there. And like I said, the second book is completely different from the first one. And the series is really beloved by a lot of people. So I'm excited to read this next installment. Next up, we have Babel by R.F. Kuang. I am so looking forward to reading this one. This is a dark academia kind of um, alternate historical fantasy, which I've heard the fantasy elements are kind of light, but basically we follow our main character who is attending Babel, which is the School of Translation at Oxford. This is a fictional school but he is a Chinese student in an English school and he is being taught to translate all of these works using this magical translation system called silver working. I really don't know a ton more than that, but I know we explore some heavy themes, some themes of 
translation as an act of colonialism in this book and I am really interested to learn more about that to read R.F. Kuang's perspective on that. I just think it will be a really interesting read and of course I love a good dark academia. This is the fairy loot edition. It is just absolutely stunning. I forgot to mention but Spells for Forgetting was also a fairy loot edition. Just absolutely gorgeous books and I really really think this is going to be an excellent read. I have heard really good things about it so far. The last adult fantasy I'm going to talk to you about before we get into young adult is One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. I am super excited about this one. We follow our main character Elspeth who has a nightmare living in her head and kind of taking over her mind. She runs into a highwayman on the road and ends up teaming up with him. He just so happens to be the nephew of the king who is accused of treason and they work together to try to save their land from some evil magic that is taking over from what I understand. Again, I don't know a whole ton about this one. I know that there is a magic system based on tarot cards or related to tarot cards. And it seems very interesting, kind of dark, gloomy, creepy. I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. I believe that this is a debut author as well. We are on our last genre. I am going to talk to you about all of the YA fantasy books that I have picked up recently. You guys know if you have been around my channel for a while that young adult fantasy is my main genre of choice. However, I am trying to branch out, but I can't help myself when a new YA fantasy comes out that sounds amazing. I have to pick it up. So we are going to go through the recent ones that I have gotten, starting with Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. This one I was actually supposed to receive quite a while ago, but Barnes & Noble had some issue with their um, production and a bunch of them were damaged, so it didn't come until recently. So I'm counting it in this book haul. It came pretty recently, and this is the Barnes & Noble edition with the sprayed edges, the gold cover. It's absolutely stunning. This is a spinoff of Chloe Gong's These Violent Delights duology, which I actually have not read and am not super interested in reading, but this one sounded so good to me, so I am curious. I have a friend who thinks I'm absolutely nuts for reading spinoff series without having first read the original series, but I just... Don't really care like if they an author says that you can pick up the next series without reading the first one and i'm not interested in the first one i will start kind of anywhere in the series as long as you know there's a there's a logical place to start like this so let me know in the comments do you have to read everything in publication order or will you pick up a spinoff without having first read the initial series let me know i need to know what other people do so this one, the reason that this one sounded interesting to me is I believe it's like 1920s Shanghai, 1931 in Shanghai. And we follow a detective, I believe, or a pair of detectives. And there is a fake marriage trope. And honestly, that's all I need to know. Like, I really don't know very much about this story, but I am so intrigued by the detectives and the fake marriage that I just cannot wait to read this book. The 1930s vibes, I'm just, Yes, I'm so there. This sounds amazing. I really hope it's good. I'm really looking forward to reading it. Next, we have an older YA fantasy that I picked up from my local used bookstore for like $1.50. I really love my used bookstore. Every once in a while, I will find a gem. And I found Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian, which I have heard about. I don't really know if I've heard good or bad things. I've just kind of heard the name floating around. I know it's an older one. This year, I read... Laura Sebastian's newest book, Castles in Their Bones, and I did enjoy it. So I thought $1.50, why not pick up Ash Princess? The back says Princess, Prisoner, Orphan, Rebel. And it just kind of gives me those like classic 2010s YA fantasy vibes. So I'm here for it. I'm interested. If you've read this, let me know if you enjoyed it or not. I don't know. Next up, we have a duology that I picked up, which is Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. And these I picked up because I've been interested in them for a while. And Lainey Taylor was in my area for an event with Adrian Young recently. So I was able to get them signed. So I picked them up so that I could do that at this event. Yeah, I have been interested in this duology for quite a while in all of Lainey Taylor's works, honestly. And Strange the Dreamer just sounded so unique, such an interesting YA fantasy. I've heard only good things about it. I've heard it is so beautiful. I've actually read the first chapter now and can attest that Lainey Taylor's writing is 
lyrical and gorgeous. And I just cannot wait to get to reading these two. But I know that in this world, there is a city that has lost its name. Nobody can remember what the name of this city is. And instead everyone calls it Weep. And we are following our main character, Laszlo Strange, who has been obsessed with this city for his entire life. And I believe gets an opportunity to go there and possibly discover what happened, why it lost its name and people started to forget about it. So I also know that we have gods with blue skin and that's where you lose me. I don't know anything else and I don't think I need to. The praise that I've heard for this duology is enough. I cannot wait to read these. I think I'm gonna love them. Next, we have a sequel and that is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. I am a huge fan of Legendborn, which is the first book in the Legendborn cycle. And this is book two, which just very recently came out. This is the Owl Crate edition. So it's got a slightly different cover and some other special features. It is also signed by Tracy Dion. And I cannot wait to pick this up and continue this series. Legendborn is a contemporary kind of dark academia fantasy novel with an Arthurian legend twist, which is so fun. We also explore kind of what it's like for this young black main character going to school in the South. And she is learning about her family roots while also uncovering this secret society that is based around King Arthur. So super interesting, super intriguing magic system. And I cannot wait to pick up this book. We'll see when I get around to this, but it'll probably be soon because I just need to know. I'm so excited. The first one was so good. A, another Owl Crate edition. This is The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew. This is a new paranormal dark academia. It's about a young deaf main character who ends up at this college where they teach students how to slip between parallel worlds. And she runs into a boy there who died when he was young and woke up weeks later alive. And she was there when he woke up. And so they're kind of supposed to stay apart from each other for whatever reason, they are not supposed to interact. And of course they get drawn together. Somebody at their school dies and they get drawn together to investigate this death, but also maybe some more sinister things that are going on related to their school. So. This one is another one that I think I'm just absolutely going to eat up. It's pretty short. I think I'll fly through it. And it just sounds like exactly my cup of tea, the Dark Academia vibes. This is probably one I will get to before the winter is over. Next, we have A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. I honestly know absolutely nothing about this book. I picked it up because it has been on my TBR for a long time. I ended up being able to get it as a free freebie with a purchase at one of my local indie bookstores. And so because it had been on my TBR for a while, I grabbed this one and I think it's going to be an interesting read. I am really intrigued by the cover. I think it's beautiful. And I honestly don't super want to know. I don't often go into books knowing absolutely nothing. So I think this is the one, this is one that I can go into completely blind and know pretty much next to nothing about. And the very last book that I want to talk to you guys about in this book haul is Saint by Adrienne Young. This is the prequel story to the Fable duology and the last legacy. I have just absolutely loved every book in this series and Saint is no exception. This is a love letter and a huge warm hug to all of the fans of the Fable duology. It follows a very beloved character and was highly requested by readers. So that is why this book ended up getting written, which I think is just so cool love the power of the reading community. It's just amazing. In Fable, we follow a young woman who was left on an island by her father and has been trying for her the last four years to get off of this island and prove herself and become a part of his crew. So I don't want to get too much into what this book is about because I don't want to spoil anything for you all. I will say that although this can be read first, I highly recommend reading the entire series in the publishing order which is Fable, Namesake, The Last Legacy, and then Saint. I just think that if you do it that way, you're going to get the most impact out of the last couple of chapters of this book. I was also able to get this signed. This was the book that the event was for, but with Adrienne and Lainey Taylor. So really happy to have a signed copy of Saint. So thank you for sticking around. I tried to make it as quick as possible, but those are all the books that I want to share with you in this haul. 
I will probably have another one early next year with books from the holidays and books that I end up picking up for myself after the holidays. But that is all for now. If you have enjoyed it, please give this video a like. Please comment below which of these books that you think you might pick up after watching this, or if you've read any of them, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to chat with you about them some more. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye friends.